Destination Africa brought to you by Standard Bank. Joining us now in studio to give us their insights on the industry and developments there is Salifo Sidu. He's CEO of Tourism Enterprise Partnership. And from our bureau in Nairobi, Kenya, Mohamed Hersi is Regional General Manager at Sarova Hotels, Resorts and Game Lodges in the Coast Region. Thanks and welcome to you both. Uh, Salif, let's perhaps start off with you in studio here because we've got TEP, a big investor in the growth and expansion of the sector in South Africa. Uh, you know, and what we've been through on the show so far really illustrating some of the investment case that gets put on the table but where you've got TEP utilizing funding from uh, corporate South Africa and government to facilitate that growth and development what response are you seeing when it comes to investors willing to put money behind the speak we've been hearing okay uh, no thank you very much for inviting us back uh, uh, again uh, uh, indeed our experience is showing that uh, investors who are willing to put money into this sector, particularly in the SME sector, are looking at TEP as a risk mitigating factor. Mm -hmm. We must never lose sight of uh, the fact that uh, the tourism industry in this country has uh, basically gone through uh, a number of phases and uh, financing, particularly um, investment funding from commercial banks uh, was uh, really very uh, difficult to, to come by. Uh, on the basis of the history of uh, the industry. But that situation is now changing uh, and uh, people have uh, woken up to the potential of uh, the tourism industry and they are uh, basically uh, putting the investment needed in there. But they're also looking at uh, ways of making sure that uh, the risk factor is mitigated. And when it comes to uh, SMEs, that's exactly the role that uh, TAP is playing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mohammed, from your end, of course, you're a key player within the tourism sector already over in Kenya. Run us through the challenges you're facing uh, in terms of growth and expansion, leveraging off some of the opportunity that uh, economic growth that the continent boasts uh, actually affords a company like yours. Uh, well, the, <clears throat> when you look at the Kenyan uh, context and the African uh, continent in itself, you'll realize that uh, our continent has not yet been explored to the fullest when it comes to tourism. Uh, when you look at a country like Kenya, uh, you'll realize that uh, we are attracting more than about 1.5 million tourists. Uh, but the potential is huge. You can easily go even up to 3 million plus. Uh, if you look at the East and Central Africa region, uh, these are all areas that are all coming up. Uh, Zanzibar and Tanzania, for instance, just started opening up mm -hmm. recently. Uh, so putting all this together, the, the potential is huge. And I believe that uh, the Sub-Saharan Africa is the place to be in the next uh, 10 years or so. What are some of the key challenges that you face, though, in uh, you know, looking to leverage off this opportunity that you've highlighted? Uh, when you look at the opportunities, uh, the, one of the biggest opportunities that uh, Africa as a continent is uh, opening up now. Uh, Africa has been known for negative things in the past, uh, but Africa is now putting its acts together. Uh, we are getting uh, democratically elected governments in place. So there are a lot of positive things happening. Uh, for instance, in the IT sector, uh, with all those put in place, then you realize that uh, Africa really uh, is the place that uh, the whole world is heading to. Now, when it comes to Africa, you realize that the challenges uh, we face, uh, the first one is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So infrastructure is key, and uh, it's very important that uh, we get our infrastructure in place. Uh, that is accessibility, uh, energy, and environment itself, because uh, you realize that with global warming and uh, destruction of the environment, uh, then uh, tourism does not become sustainable. Uh, and that is something we really need to look at. But then the other bit is uh, finance you know, and funding. Uh, but the fact that Africa still has a negative perception in the eyes of the world, uh, you realize that uh, borrowing in many parts of Africa is still very expensive. Uh, although that is also changing because there's a lot of homegrown uh, solutions when it comes to the uh, banking sector. Uh, so you realize that uh, interest in the past used to be as, as, as high as 30 uh, percent, but nowadays it's dropping as low as yeah. you know 10 or even 14 in Kenya. So that is the positive aspect. And uh, yes, we have the challenges, but I believe uh, there's a lot of opportunities. Yes. 
Salif, let's pick up on that issue of sustainability uh, that Mohammed highlighted there, because that is a key issue. What are the prime problems you've identified w uh, when working with smaller players in the industry that impedes sustainability of operations? Uh, one of uh, the main uh, uh, challenges that small uh, operators face essentially is uh, market access. Uh, if they do not get access to the market and uh, they are not basically uh, getting customers uh, and uh, they don't get customers for a number of reasons, whether their marketing strategies are not uh, aligned, mm -hmm. or whether they are in the wrong segment of the market for the kind of products that they are uh, offering, uh, or they simply do not have the, the, skill, uh, the skills base. Uh, to take their operations to the next level. All these are challenges to their sustainability. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we have put in place uh, programs uh, that uh, look at uh, those kind of issues and make sure that uh, our members, TEP members, um, are provided with uh, those kind of skills to ensure that uh, they are sustainable. So that the there world. is that long-term viability. When it comes to the environment, Mohammed, we're looking at an increasingly competitive one, uh, you know, because foreign eyes, as we've been saying, chasing growth and certainly casting their eyes on the continent because of its growth prospects that are put on the table. How do you rate barriers to entry within this sector? Well, that has also changed a lot in the recent past. Uh, you'll realize that the open skies policy has not been uh, part of uh, many African countries. Uh, the open skies policy has now changed. There's a, we have blocks, you know, the trading blocks, the integration. We have the East African community where we have the Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. Uh, they equally have the East African uh, safety and security uh, in aviation uh, mm -hmm. sector. And then they also work closely with the Comesa and the Sada countries. Now all, all these blocks are put together and then you pull in the West African uh, part. Uh, then Africa becomes accessible uh, easily. And uh, in the past, you realize that uh, national airlines uh, will not find easy access to second cities or third cities in many parts of Africa. But that has changed. Uh, for instance, in our own country, uh, we have Rwanda Air now that can fly to Mombasa comfortably. But we have Ethiopia Air that is flying to Mombasa, which is our second uh, city. And uh, for the first time, you know, we are getting tourists, uh, you know, from Europe, uh, Germany, uh, Italy, uh, aboard Ethiopian Air. They are not landing in Nairobi, but they are landing in Mombasa. So that is something positive that's happening in Africa yeah. that will not have happened, uh, you know, five years ago or so. Uh, Salif, uh, just very briefly, uh if we're putting the investment case and trying to attract uh, investors onto the continent, into the sector, how, we sh how should we be motivating our value proposition? Our value proposition uh, essentially is uh, uh, this. Africa has been identified as the fastest growing region uh, in the world. Uh, there is a strong case to be made for investment not only in infrastructure, but also in uh, the fact that uh, the population, the African population, is uh, becoming wealthier. Uh, tourism is a product that targets the wealthy segments of, uh, of the population. We must, we must not uh, be shy about that. We should then uh, be able to start educating uh, the uh, population in terms of uh, uh, customer education, in terms of uh, how to uh, uh, enjoy the product uh, that Africa has to offer. Uh, and we also need to make sure that uh, we diversify the product to stay away from uh, the traditional uh, Leo uh, the lion, uh, mm -hmm. as uh, uh, people would put it uh, in, the, in the tourism industry. We need to be able to find a way of uh, presenting the diversity of uh, the African tourism product. And, uh, uh, there is a market for that. There are people who are interested in cultural products, uh, people who are interested in uh, nature-based tourism, uh, and uh, the offering is really wide, and uh, each country has something special to offer. So that one of the uh, goals we should be uh, reaching for right now, providing an alternative face to the traditional tourism experience on the continent.